you're going to learn how to actually utilize the credit utilization that's attached to every credit card to win. And you're going to learn special tools that we use to help you maximize your credit score. So we're going to get started right at the top of the hour. And we are also going to live stream this as well. So just give me a second to set that up. And um, we'll be on our way here in just a moment. All right, all right. You're getting closer to start time. There's one more person trying to get on, so we're going to give them a second. All right, perfect. So, so they're coming. So let's go ahead and get started then. I'm going to go with our group. Go to strategies. Perfect. Boom. <clears throat> all right. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for coming on out to our credit master class. Uh, my name is Jerry Goins here, one half of Goins Financial. And we also have an amazing team of credit experts and financial consultants all across the nation. You know, and one of our goals is just to help you get that perfect credit score that you need to be able to unlock the American dream. Now, we all know that, you know, the American dream is just a dream until you add credit to the mix, you know, then you're able to do something with it. So we're going to cover some tools, some tricks, some resources um, that we can actually utilize to maximize our credit. And we're going to also talk about a lot about credit utilization. So learning how to actually play with that credit card and get the maximum utilization for the use of it. But before we begin, you must understand poor credit and financial illiteracy keep you from living the American dream. We have to address this. We have to understand how the rich are using credit to maximize their wealth so that we can do it too. Seven good reasons that you should have good credit. If you want to have a uh, note to lower deposits, down payments and interest rates, uh, to become a homeowner, to drive a newer, safer, more fuel efficient vehicle. You know, I'm definitely a witness to having, going from a car that would overheat like every single day to, you know, my first push button start vehicle, you know, had to do it with credit, you know, no other way around it. So to start a business, you're gonna need funding 
to grow it. A lot of people are funding their business out of their pocket because they don't realize how easy it is to use their personal credit to launch their business credit and to get funding from that point forward uh, to get a new job. Uh, or you're just seeking a promotion. Listen, a lot of places, especially the higher tier salary jobs, they're going to check your credit because they want to make sure that you're a responsible person, that you're not just having a whole bunch of um, repossessions and all kinds of just, just because as an adult, our credit is our report card. And if you have somebody brand new coming into your organization, one of the ways that you check to see if they're a good steward is by checking their credit. So if you want to have more money to invest for your lifestyle, you got to have good credit. No sense throwing it all away to credit card companies. And uh, studies show that good credit makes you more attractive. Isn't that crazy? You know, so today's master class is all about credit card mastery. Utilization is the key. Okay. Utilization is the amount of your credit limit that you use. Express as a percentage. It's called the credit utilization. Now, FICO says that the amount of available credit that you use counts for 30% of your score, while Vantage Score 3.0 puts credit utilization at 20%. So if somebody's pulling your FICO score, okay, they're going to be looking to see if your credit utilization is below 30%. If somebody's pulling your Vantage Score, credit utilization needs to be below 20%. So the bottom line is do not max out your limits on your cards, okay? So what we're going to dive into is how to master that credit card. So dates are the secret. Somebody put that in the comment section. Dates are the secret. Dates are the secret, y'all. So the report date, aka the close date or the statement date, is one of the dates that you need to know. It's actually more important than the payment due date. But if you ask most people, they only know about the payment due date, okay? So what you wanna do is call your credit card provider and ask for these dates. If you do not know these dates, just ask for them. They will tell you, okay? So call your credit card provider and just say, hey, I need to know the report date or the close date or the statement date, however you all call it. I need to know that for th this card. Then what you do is you make a list of all of your cards and you put it on your calendar. You can color code it if you want. That's another secret because, you know, the, the way the brain memorizes and categorizes things is also by color. That's how in nature we know not to eat certain things because they have this bright color to it. They just look poisonous, not because of the way they're shaped, but because of their color. And so we start to learn what's good, what's bad, uh, what's even what, you know, there's a whole, whole bunch of different things that are just color coded, just put it that way. Uh, but just do that as well so you can be able to quickly glance at your calendar and know these things. Um, some people just want to make a straight drill down list as well. So you might have five credit cards. You put, you know, Chase, the last four digits, and you say close date is one thing, and, you know, the due date is another thing. And then you go down to the next one. Uh, this one is my uh my staples credit card you know staples visa or whatever you know and then you just put what that is and you just keep going down the line okay so here's an example you can take a screenshot of this if you need to so everybody needs to have a credit card calendar and if you don't have credit cards yet because you're afraid to use credit cards uh you know our parents told us to stay away from them then i do want you to know that this is essential in building your credit score you're never going to get above a 700 or I would definitely say an 800 without at least one credit card, because one of the things that the credit score is built on is your credit mix. So they want to see the different kinds of credit and how you're using it. And if you don't have any credit cards then how will they tell how will you get all the points from your credit mix. Okay, so with this, it's an easy credit card calculator. All right, so we're gonna start off with the report date, AKA the close date. Let me see if I can hide the video panel over here just to make sure everyone can see this. Okay. 
All right. So the report date, aka the close date or the statement date, it's just different for different providers. I don't know why they don't just all come together and just agree on one particular day or what to call it. <clears throat> but let's say your close date is the 17th of your current cycle. So your payment due date from the prior cycle is usually four days prior. Okay, so let's say your payment due date for the last cycle was on the 13th. Guess what? I want you to instill a chill zone on your calendar. That's right. Everybody put chill zone in the comment section. Chill zone. Don't use your card during these days. Don't use your card on your payment date and don't use your card until the day after your close date or your report date. Chill zone. This right here is a secret that your credit card company doesn't want you to know. Okay? Because if you knew this, <clears throat> if you knew this secret, they would lose money on interest. One second, let me clear my throat here. They would lose money on the interest. Because what happens is on your close date, whatever balance that you have gets snapshot. Whatever balance that you have on your report date gets snapshot, okay? So that way I, I do the little noise because that's how we remember things. Some people are more audio, some people are more visual. Okay, so now we're hitting both angles. That's when they take this snapshot. What is this snapshot, you say? So, <laughs> Jerry, you, you just throwing out all kinds of words today. I've never heard of this. I had a credit card all my life. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's okay. So a snapshot is going to take a, um, a quick freeze of your balance on this day. So if you had a $1,000 balance or $1,000 limit, right, and your balance was $1,000 because you used it all the way up, well, then the snapshot would report to the credit bureaus that you use up 100% of your available credit limit. It didn't count on the day before. It's not counting on the day after. It's counting on that close date is when that snapshot is taken. And that's what gets reported. Now, out of that $1,000 balance, what if you were only using 300 of it? Well, you're right there at that 30%. So now it gets reported to the credit bureaus that you're using 30% of your total balance. And yes, you still take a little bit of a hit on your credit um, because you don't have a zero balance. But what they say is the trade-off to actually being able to use that card and to have um, you know, an amount that's paid off, 30% is a good threshold. So if you can't pay your balance all the way down, at least pay it down to that $300. Okay, so if you had it on the 14th, if your card was maxed out at $1,000, well, and you got paid on Thursday, well, I can't even say you got paid on Thursday because there's one more trick and I'm gonna tell you about this in a second, but let's say on the eighth, okay, we're gonna to rewind to the prior week. On the eighth, if your balance was $1,000 and you sent in a payment for 700 bucks, okay? Well, we all know with these credit card companies, they are gonna take at least five days to process that thing, okay? So that's why one of the tips that you're gonna see is don't wait to the last minute to process your payment. Always process your payment at least 10 days before the um, payment due date. And then don't use it all the way through that chill date, okay? Um, now, here's another thing is if you paid your balance down all the way to zero, and then you it took a snapshot of that zero, then guess how much interest you pay on that credit card? Zero. OK, so that's another secret. That's why they don't want you to know these things. They want you to make the payment on Monday or by Monday, and they want you to use the card on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on Friday. So when they take the snapshot, they say, ha ha, I got you. All right. So I don't want to spend too much time with this because, you know, you're starting to catch on. 
That's right. Chill zone. Chill zone. I see you in there. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for participating. So here's some tips. Stay under that 30%. You know, we just covered that. If you can't pay the full balance, at least make two payments a month. If the payment is 50 bucks a month, pay that $50 two times per month, and that's going to help you with your utilization, and that way you don't have to necessarily remember the dates because you're you're hitting them two times a month with a payment, so it's lowering your utilization, and um, and it, and it all, some places actually count those two different payments as two positive payments on your credit report as well. So it's going to help defeat the interest. So remember, it's going to take that snapshot at a certain time and whatever your balance is, that's what's going to count towards how much interest that you pay. So if you're making these two payments, it's chopping down at that interest. And like I said, they don't always report it, but some say two payments will report. All right. So that's even better than just one payment reporting because part of your credit util part of your credit score is payment history and how many positive payments did you make on time all right so another tip is to use your credit card like a debit card but just remember that chill zone okay so every time you spend make a payment on it all right so with a debit card you can't even spend it unless you have it all right so what i want you to think about is whenever you use your credit card just go ahead and make a payment on it i I bought something for a hundred dollars. Let me go ahead and pay for it out of my checking account, send it right onto my credit card. And now you might be thinking, well, what's the whole point in this whole thing? Like I'm I'm going through a lot of hoops and a lot of hurdles, and I'll get to it in just a second. Uh, number four, pay five to ten days ahead of your due date to ensure that you lock in the lowest utilization. Remember, some of these credit card places, even though they got the payment, we know how banking works. It usually takes about three days to transfer the money. Uh, so why does it take five to 10 days for a payment to actually post on your credit card? Well, because they're using the money to go fund somebody else's credit spending. Okay. It's called a credit card. It's all credit. There's really no money behind it. It's just this big kind of slush fund. So when I make that payment of $700 on the eighth, like I just showed you on the last slide, well, that $700 is now turning into somebody else's spending money when they swipe that card. So that way the credit company has something to pay the merchant or whatever they bought, you know, whatever that person bought, this that $700 is coming out of that. And then by the time it comes around to me to actually post to my account that says, hey, yes, you made that payment, that money that is put there is coming from somebody else making their payment, okay? So that's how you got to think of this is like, you know, you're not directly paying your bill, you're paying somebody else's bill. And then a few days come around and then they, they say, okay, I'm gonna post it to your account now so you can spend it. That's why they charge interest, okay? When technically you should be getting paid interest <laughs> for every time you make a payment. You know, every time it takes, every day beyond that third day that it takes for your payment to post, they should be paying you interest, but they don't. Uh, but you know that's just the way it works but you now that you know how it works you can utilize it and leverage it okay so this is the reason why we're going through this y'all because most credit cards give you points cashback points this is really how they're trying to reward you and incentivize you to use their card so they say hey we'll, we'll give you one percent cash back why do they give me one percent cash back because they're using your money to go spend somebody else's uh, credit card as somebody else's credit card spend and they're charging them 20% interest rate because they don't know the trick that I just shared with you. And on that person's report date is going to show that they're using all this money <clears throat> and they get to actually charge them interest. Now they're giving you 1% interest on the cash back that you spend, they're giving you 1%, but they're taking your money and they're charging somebody else 20%. OK, that's why credit card companies are billion dollar organizations. All right. But you can use this free money and, and really like pay down. I remember uh, paying down like we, we had like a plane ticket. I used the points to play to basically pay for my plane ticket for Uber drives. Uh, me and my wife ate out at a restaurant, used the points to pay for that. And it's just it's just free money. So. But what you really have to do is just stay on top of that report date and that snapshot. Otherwise, 
you might be getting a free meal, but it's costing you much more than that meal because you're paying 20% interest just to get 1% cash back. So you want to beat them at their own game. You want to pay that credit card off or at least down as much as you can. So what other ways can you actually increase your credit score? You know, we have many other tips and tricks I'm going to share with you, including our secret weapon, which has helped over 50,000 people go from poor to great credit. First, you want to check a credit report. All right. So I'm going to share with you a few different things to look for on your credit report. Uh, revolving credit. That's your credit cards. Just like a revolving door, you spend it, you make a payment on it, you get it back. You spend it, you make a payment on it, you get it back. Doesn't work that way with the next thing, which is installment debt, because you're trying to actually own that thing that you're paying on. So you're trying to own that car, you're trying to own that home. So when you put the money on it, the money doesn't come back. You know, it goes into the equity of paying that off completely. That's called installment debt. Then there's charge offs, that's canceled debt. Then there's collections, that's debt that's been sold to a collection agency. There's inquiries, that's any attempts to get new credit right uh, and then there's debt that doesn't belong to you on there you might see a name that you're like who is this or you might see an account opening you're like well what is that i've never applied there you want to go to freeannualcreditreport.com they will give you your credit report your entire credit report for free once a year i think we are still under certain uh guidelines thanks to you know uh different acts that congress has passed recently where you can get this once a month uh with freeannualcreditreport.com uh, I'm not sure when that ends. I will definitely check that out, but you can you can do that at least once a year. Um, now let's understand what makes up your score. There's five different categories that actually build a FICO score. Um, everybody starts off with a 300, you know. So when you're fresh out of high school, as soon as you get of age, you have a 300 credit score. Now payment history accounts for 192 points, about 35 percent of your score. Uh, Credit utilization accounts for 30% or about 165 points. The age of your credit accounts for 15% um, or 82 points. Credit mix accounts for 10% or 55 points. And new credit accounts for another 10% or 55 points. So 300 plus 550, that equals a perfect 850. So anything between a 300 and all the way up to an 850, it all depends on what you do right here. Okay, this right here is the math. This right here is what is is really your battlefield. So when we talk about credit utilization, if you are um, at a zero percent credit utilization, then you're getting all 165 points. Okay, if you are at a maximum and you max out all of your credit cards, then you're losing a total of 165 points. Okay, so that's why that is so important because it's the second greatest impact on your credit. So um, you can definitely boost your score just by paying down your credit card. So I'm going to give you a tip uh, for each one of these categories. Number one is dispute the negative items. Okay, Writing dispute letters yourself can be time consuming, though. So you definitely want to uh, be able to uh, understand exactly what you're doing, or you could be spending hours doing this. You may not know all your rights, what items to challenge, which ones to leave alone, because each item on your credit report has a statute of limitations where they can no longer pursue you after a certain date. Most states is seven years. Okay, so you don't want to touch something that's on the sixth year. You might as well just let it ride out. Because if you if you kind of poke the beehive, well then they can reset that statute of limitations and start the collection process all over again because you challenged it. You know, so you don't want to do that. But another thing is it asks for an increase on your credit cards but don't use your increase, okay? That way you can have a, a, a new set of limits on your credit card, but you're not using it. So automatically it lowers your utilization, okay? Because the further away you are from that limit, the better your utilization is. So if they just gave you a boost and you're not using it, then hey, you're good to go. But uh, if you have negative payment um, history, then you may not get it. So you definitely wanna pay on time, you know, I would say pay on time at least six months before asking for an increase. Matter of fact, if you can pay your entire balance off for six months in a row, you're almost guaranteed to get an increase because they're trying to get you to, they're trying to trip you into actually using more of your credit so you can't afford to pay it all off in one payment or at least in one month. Becoming an authorized user is another tip. So asking a friend or relative to get added to their credit account, is, that is in good standing, keywords, good standing. 
Okay, this can be hard to do. Um, and, and also being a primary trade line holder is a much better impact on your score. The worst thing you can do is get added as an authorized user on somebody who's not making those payments on time because now you, you can't even call in or dispute anything because it's not your account. Okay, and it's much better to have <clears throat> that primary seat because things like the new FICO uh, 10, they actually don't even count the authorized users. And a lot of these mortgage companies, when you apply for a mortgage, they don't count any accounts that you're an AU on. And an AU just means authorized user. So they're starting to discredit the fact that you're an authorized user. So really what you want to do is use that authorized user status to get better um, credit cards in your own name. So if you have somebody in the Chase ecosystem and you get added as an authorized user there, then in about 30 days, when it starts to report to the credit bureaus that you're an authorized user on somebody's $10,000 Chase card, then you go and you apply for your own Chase card. You know, um, and then that way you're a primary on there and that way that person can then release you as an authorized user from their account and you're good to go there. So another tip is to get a secured card because <clears throat> a lot of people, they just can't get the credit card. This is helpful. So um, a lot of places they will graduate you to an unsecured card, which is also known as a regular credit card, but you have to ask before you do that. Okay, so, so that, that only makes sense. You want to make sure that you say, hey, before you get this Discover card, I know this is a secured card, but is this one where I can graduate to an unsecured card? Just ask them. And if it's not, then they will make a recommendation to one of their cards that does graduate. Okay, because you don't just want to have a, a secured card forever because the money that you put into a secured card, uh, which is the collateral, you know, it stays there forever. So you put 500 down on a secured card, you'll never get that 500 back, but you will have a $500 line of credit. But guess what? You got to pay the $500 line of credit back. So there's still $500 missing that you'll never get back. Uh, some places will give you that back though. So ask them, what is the policy on your deposit? Okay, so that's good to know. Um, report rent payments. Hey, you're living there anyway. You might as well let those payments count to the bureaus, but it can be difficult to find a trustworthy company to do this for you. There's a lot of scams out there. A lot of places charge like it feels like another rent payment just to report your rent payments. And then the landlord has to be in on it. So there's a whole lot of things, but there are some places out there. Don't close your old credit cards. That's another tip. This will increase your utilization, which you don't want. Okay, because one less uh, limit that's added to your total limits, one less limit means that you have less of a wiggle room for utilization and that will hurt your score the last thing you can do is seek professional help <laughs> you know not that kind of professional help but even though working on your credit can make you feel like you're going crazy okay how many people agree working on your credit it has you like mentally unstable okay just oh my gosh it's like you know you got collection letters coming in you've got dispute letters going out you've got collect collectors uh calling you you've got scammers trying to get your money and then you got people charging ridiculous rates to try to help you with your score it's just ridiculous out there all right so and if you did decide to do it yourself here's five things that you want to consider um so just everybody needs to know this you may be stepping in something you don't fully understand might be underestimate you may underestimate the necessity of a paper trail okay because sometimes people want to dispute things online you don't want to do that uh, you may not have the necessary negotiating skills sometimes you actually call these creditors or whoever trade lines say that you owe money to sometimes you got to call them and walk them back on their offer uh, sometimes uh, people will take them up on a debt settlement and you never want to do that because then it just reports a negative um, derogatory payment history on your credit report, even though you paid it off and they stopped collecting and stopped sending you letters, it still shows as a negative account. You know, so there's no point in paying a collection for a settlement. Never ever settle. It makes no sense at all. You might as well just don't settle and let it sit there as bad debt. It's the same exact impact on your credit for the same exact amount of time. All right, you may not understand the laws regarding the credit, 
and you might quit quit before the job is finished if you're doing it yourself. So you know, we want to offer you a fintech solution here. You know, it's no vague. It's where we at right now. You know, we provide inspiration. So we want to inspire you to get more out of life. Hopefully you've already got that. We want to educate you on how to go about it. So hopefully you feel more educated right now. Um, and then we provide uh, opportunities to make it happen. So right now, the only thing that's missing is the opportunity to put everything that you've been inspired to be, everything that you've been educated for into place right now. Uh, and we have real people, real results. You know, all you got to do is just Google Nove Money. I know you're going to do that anyway. You know, we have an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. That just means that we don't let our customers down. Okay. Um, so one of the tricks that we have here is called Score Boost. It actually tracks all of your scores with a very simple chart. And um, this is one of our tools called MyNove Credit. So that's really cool. We have our own credit monitoring suite. You get to see your utilization across all of your cars. You get to determine your future score by sliding this little, you see right here where it says uh, plus 44 in the middle of the screen, uh, of this person's screen right here. It says plus 44. Well, he started off at a 565 or 556. And by sliding it up here, it says by making a total payment of $2,800, well, that's going to give him a future score of 600 bucks or 600. So all you, and that, remember when I said you can increase your credit score just by paying down your credit cards? Well, now this right here is going to show you on this tool the date, the report date, and the due date of all of your credit cards. Because believe it or not, your payment due date and your report date can be found on your credit report. And since what we do is just import your credit report, well, we can find these dates for you and put them all in the line. All right. So now you can you see all these cards down here that's listed on this app. He has a Chase, he has a Capital One, he has a Wells Fargo. And, and you're just like, well, I just pay it when this due. That might not be the best thing for you, but this app right here will help you to figure that out. You just log right on in, all right, and it helps you out. We also have something called credit likes. You know, this is really, really cool because with this right here, we send the monthly disputes out for you, and you get the online money manager, debt elimination tool, financial wealth guide, uh, credit building resources, three monthly, three bureau score reports, daily credit monitoring, text and email alerts, credit score tracker, uh, credit score builder, um, the simulator that you just saw, identity theft protection, one million uh, in fraud insurance. Uh, you also get a non-credit dispute library so you can actually see the things that you may want to send out on your own, uh, complimentary credit education and restoration all within this suite. How much is it, Jerry? Because I, if, listen, it sounds so good. <laughs> well, the enrollment here is 239. So just to get started, two thirty nine, and then per month is only eighty nine bucks. There's no contract, so you can quit whenever you're ready. All you gotta do is um, get back with the person that got you on here and just say, "Hey, I saw something about credit likes." Jerry was talking about, uh, you know, because everybody likes good credit, and I need to enroll. All right, then as soon as you enroll, you're gonna schedule your credit likes onboarding. This right here is so key because not a lot of places offer this. We have um, someone that's actually going to reach out to you, understand your credit situation, help you pull your reports, and then we're going to import this into our system so we can analyze it and see which items are negative, generate your dispute letters, and your dispute letters go out within two days after you um, onboard. Okay, so you activate the services, start your process, and you just track your results. Now, this right here is another thing that I'm really excited about because this is yet another credit tool that we offer. It's called MyNovay Disputes. It's the future of credit. It's literally the new way. And it's only 99 bucks to get started. $49 a month, no contract again. We don't believe in contracts, okay? Um, you can dispute any account all, across all three bureaus. We have something called a smart import. Okay, so we automatically pull in all three of your, uh, um, all three of your scores with no hard inquiry. Okay, so nothing that we do is going to put an inquiry on your report. It's crazy because some places out there, the way that they do it is they have to pull your consumer credit report, and that actually put, puts an inquiry on there. I'm like, what in the world? You're supposed to be trying to help people with their credit, not ding it, you know? And so what we use is something called AI technology. You probably heard that uh, we have computers that can drive cars, right? To, shout out to Elon Musk. You know, you, you might have uh, flown recently. Little do you know, 
most of the time that pilot's hand was not on the wheel okay so ai actually flies and navigates the plane most of the time the majority of the time that it's in the air the pilot is just there in case something goes wrong so uh, we even have robots that can that can mow the grass isn't that crazy you, you've seen the ones that can vacuum your your whole house right the roomba things right well now they have one out there that can actually scan your yard and and you know actually go out there and mow the grass it's just crazy but now we have ai technology that can actually help you generate dispute letters and have and all you do is print out these dispute letters and listen these dispute letters are not like some cookie cutter template these are actually generated using machine learning so it knows that hey if it worked for you know tom sue and sally that had a credit one account that was showing late and this template worked for them then it's going to suggest it for you you select that you want it and it generates the dispute letters for you is really really cool i say you spend about 20 minutes per month generating your dispute letters and mailing them out okay especially if you have a home office you're just putting them in the envelopes you're putting a stamp on it and then you put it out in the mail and the mailman comes and get it you know some people actually go down to the post office and that's fine too but you can actually generate unlimited disputes okay so some credit companies they only want to do three disputes at a time and drag the process out well that's not good for somebody especially who has a lot of identity theft so this right here you can generate unlimited disputes It's professional It's more effective than the regular letters that you see um, and is more affordable so I really like that fact too because some people can't get started at the 239 level uh, this right here is a lot more digestible on the budget but credit monitoring listen we want to make sure that you get this this comes with both of those packages that I just showed you so with that being said listen we want to say welcome home you know whatever your credit goals are we want to help you get started get back with your financial consultant whoever got you on here or if you're watching the replay there may be links somewhere on this page to be able to just go ahead and enroll um, but we want to thank you for the time that you came and you spent with us we hope you got inspired we hope you got educated and we hope that you take us up on the opportunity to help you with your credit all right good night everybody